Do you want to study web development but don't know where to start from as a beginner? Well, let me be honest. It can get very confusing as there are so many resources available that demanding the best technique to learn coding can be difficult. But for now, all you need is a rudimentary understanding of web development and some guidance on where to go next. Hello and welcome to this video by Intellipart. In this video, I will guide you through the beginning stages of learning web development as an absolute beginner. Now before we move forward, please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so that you never miss any update from IntelliPath. Now let's take a look at the agenda. Firstly, we will see what is web development, after which we will understand the terms front-end, back-end and full-stack. After that, we will see the fundamentals of front-end and back-end and lastly, some tips. So without any further ado, let's get on with the video. So before we get on with the video, I would like to show you what the learning flow looks like. The very first step will be learning the fundamentals of website development, including the front end and back end. Then we'll learn the fundamentals of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Lastly, we will see and learn the fundamentals of the back end, including the servers and databases, as well as programming languages. Now let's get on with our video. So the first agenda right here is what is web development? So under this topic, I will try to cover the basic working of website. As in order to learn something new, you have to get a hold of how it works first. So at the most basic level, all websites are simply a collection of files kept on a computer known as a server. This server has an internet connection. You can then access that website on your computer or phone using a browser such as Chrome, Firefox or Safari. In this case, your browser is also referred to as the client. So, every time you go online, you, the client, are getting and loading data, like this video itself, from the server, as well as submitting data to the server. The internet is built on this back and forth interaction between the client and the server. All in all to say that anything you may access through your browser was created by a web developer. For example, on the simpler side, there are small company websites and blogs. And on the more complex side, there are web apps like Airbnb, Facebook, and Twitter. Now let's move on to our next agenda and talk about the meaning of front-end, back-end, and full-stack. The terms front-end, back-end, and full-stack web developers refer to the parts of the client or server connection with which you are involved. The term Front-end refers to working primarily with clients. Because it's what you see in the browser, it's termed the front-end. The back-end, on the other hand, is the part of the website that you can't see, but it's responsible for a lot of logic and functionality that makes everything operate. So front-end development can be compared to the front house of a restaurant. Customers come here to see and experience the restaurant, including the interior decor, seats, and of course the food. Back-end development, on the other hand, is similar to the back house part of a restaurant. It's where deliveries and inventory are controlled, as well as the meal preparation process. Customers won't see a lot of what goes behind the scenes, but they get to experience the final product. And well, full stack is a combination of both front-end and back-end. Now, we will try to understand a bit more about the basic front-end. HTML, CSS, and JavaScript are the three sorts of files that make up a website's front end. On the client side, these are the files that are loaded in a browser. Now let's take a closer look at each of them individually. First of all, we have HTML. All websites are built on HTML or hypertext markup language. It's the most common file type that your browser loads when you visit a website. The HTML file contains all of the page's content and employs tags to distinguish between different sorts of material. Tags can be used to create headline titles, paragraphs, bulleted lists, images, and other elements. HTML tags have some styles linked to them, but they are rather simple, similar to what you would find in a word page. With that, we'll take a look at CSS. CSS, or Cascading Style Sheets, is a programming language that allows you to style HTML material to make it seem pleasant and sophisticated. You have complete control over the colors, custom fonts, and the layout of your website's parts. CSS can also be used to make animations and shapes. It has a lot of depth and people often pass over it in order to go on to other things like JavaScript. On the other hand, understanding how to translate a design into a website layout with CSS cannot be emphasized enough. It's very critical to have strong CSS skills if you wish to specialize in front development. 
Now we'll see JavaScript. Now JavaScript is a web-based programming language. You may make your website dynamic by using JavaScript, which allows it to respond to various inputs from the user or external sources. You can, for example, create a back to top button that will scroll the user back to the top of the page when they click it. Alternatively, you can create a weather widget that displays current weather conditions based on the user's location. In my opinion, you'll understand more if you take the time to study plain vanilla JavaScript first, especially if you want to expand your skills with the JavaScript framework like React later on. It's a great language to learn because you can accomplish so much with it. Next, we will take a look at some basic backend. The server side of web development, often known as the backend, is made up of basic three primary components. The server, a server side programming language, and the database. Firstly, we will have a look at the server. The server, as we indicated at the outset, is the computer that houses all of the websites, files, databases, and other components. Traditional servers use Linux or Windows as their operating systems. Because the website files, backend code, and data are all stored on the same server, they are referred to be as centralized. Serverless architectures, which are more decentralized sort of arrangement, are now available. This type of application separates such components and outsources their management to third-party suppliers. Next up, we have programming languages. Well, to write the functions and logic for your application on the server, you will need to utilize a programming language. After that, that, the server compiles your code and returns the result to the client. PHP, Python, Ruby, C Sharp, and Java are all popular online programming languages. Node.js, a runtime environment that can run JavaScript code on the server, is another type of server-side JavaScript. You can utilize frameworks with each of these server-side languages as well. These back-end frameworks like the front-end JavaScript frameworks are useful tools that speed up the development of online projects. Next, we'll learn about databases. Databases are where you keep information for your website. As the name implies, SQL, which stands for Structured Query Language, is used by most databases. Data is saved in the database as tables with rows similar to complex Excel documents. Then you may use SQL to create, read, update, and delete data by writing queries. The database is run on the server with Windows servers using Microsoft SQL Server and Linux servers using MySQL. No SQL databases, on the other hand, store data in JSON files other than traditional tables. MongoDB is also a form of NoSQL database that is frequently used with React, Angular, and Vue applications. Lastly, some tips if you are visualizing yourself to be a self-taught developer. Do not make the mistake of attempting to learn everything at once. Choose one skill to master at a time. Don't leap from one tutorial to the next. It's fine to try out different resources while you're learning to find which one you prefer. But once again, pick one and strive to complete it. Recognize that learning web programming is a lengthy process. Despite the stories you may have heard of people going from zero to landing a web dev job in three months, if you're starting from scratch, I would aim for one to two years to become work ready. You won't become an expert only by attending a video course or reading a book. First step is to learn the material. Building genuine websites and projects will assist you in really consolidating your knowledge. And that's all for this video. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for more updates from us. Just a quick info guys. IntelliPad provides PG program in web development offered by Bellhaven University. The course link of which is given in the description below.